uh, live stream on uh, StreamYard. You know, uh, the first time I've been using, uh, I'm going to be using uh, this uh, app, uh, especially for uh, the live Dhamma talk uh, for the uh, for the uh, global uh, Buddhist congregation 2020 uh, in India. Uh, thank you. And first of all, I want to wish everyone a happy uh, Buddha Purnima Day or happy Vesak Day. I know the exact Vesak Day is coming uh, uh, tomorrow, but uh, we are uh, in the eve of uh, Vesak Day. So happy Vesak Day to everyone. Okay, so um, I know a lot of people like uh, you uh, who are connecting from, uh, you know, primarily from uh, global uh, Buddhist congregation in India uh, and, and far and wide, uh, you know, uh, get to listen to a lot of Dhamma talks today. And uh, I, I uh, thought that I would, uh, uh, you know, give a Dhamma talk on uh, a topic uh, like this transforming pain uh, within brackets that's dukkha into peace joy and liberation the four noble truths so basically i'll be talking uh, today for you the four noble truths uh, with uh, the subtopic in mind uh, transformation of pain into peace joy and liberation we know uh, the Vesak day is the day that we uh, reflect upon the Buddhist teachings, uh, specifically uh, uh, with three events, the birth of uh, Prince Siddhartha and uh, the awakening uh, of uh, ascetic, uh, uh, ascetic uh, Gautama and uh, the passing away of uh, the, uh, the Buddha Shakyamuni. So the most important thing that we understand uh, for today, uh, for the Vesak day, is Buddha's awakening. If we had not been able to uh, awaken, uh, we would have not, uh, uh, you know, uh, gain access to uh, the Dhamma. So that's why I thought to talk about uh, the Four Noble Truths, but a different, uh, you know, easy way for you to understand. You know that uh, transformation is a big concept in the philosophical religious traditions. Uh, I'm not talking about other religions, but I talk about the Buddhist teachings. Uh, Buddhist teachings is completely a transformation. So you transform. What is transforming within you? Your pain, your dissatisfaction, your unsatisfactoriness. Uh, so that pain or unsatisfactoriness uh, or uh, dissatisfaction can be transformed into, uh, uh, you know, satisfactoriness, uh, peace, joy, liberation, and all the good positive, to, to, into all the good positive things. How can we do that? Only by understanding the Four Noble Truths. So that's the big message uh, that I'm going to give to you uh, with my talk. So I'll be using a sutta for this uh, from the uh, Pali teachings. You know, Majjhima the Middle End Saints, there's one sutta comes in Majjhima called Mahachattarisaka Sutta. Mahachattarika Sutta is one of the greatest analysis of the Four Noble Truths. Specifically, we can uh, see, uh, you know, the analysis, synthesis of the Four Noble Truths. It's not just saying that this is the first Noble Truth, and this is the second Noble Truth, this is the third Noble Truth, this is the fourth Noble Truth. It has much more to, uh, you know, read, if you can really look into the Sutta. The Sutta's name is Maha Chattarisaka Sutta. Now, you know, in the Four Noble Truths, uh, let's uh, you know, uh, go over the uh, Four Noble Truths in general. The first Noble Truth is the Noble Truth on 
dukkha. Now, I understand there's a big problem in translating the Pali word called dukkha. And I don't think dukkha is suffering. Dukkha is something, uh, I could say, a pain. Uh, you, could, you could say that the pain can take you to suffering, but, but what if the pain talks about uh, things like uh, frustration, unsatisfactoriness, uh, without the suffering? It can happen too. So I would say, let's uh, keep the word called dukkha as dukkha. Uh, at most, we could say pain. Okay, so Buddha said the first noble truth is Dukkha Arisatya, that means uh, the noble truth uh, called Dukkha. What is this noble truth called Dukkha? Buddha, deal, Buddha defines the, uh, the first noble truth in, in a couple ways. He says the birth is uh, Dukkha, decay is Dukkha, Jara. Uh, Death is dukkha, marana, and soka parideva dukkha domanasa upayasa. They all are dukkhas. Dukkha, soka means grief, parideva is a lamentation, dukkha is a physical pain, domanasa is mental pain, upayasa is despair, complete loss of hope, frustration, disappointment. Not even those uh, definitions. He also uh, goes on to say, young, young, uh, not getting what one desires. We wish a lot of things in our life. Uh, most of them are, uh, uh, you know, personal, sometimes not personal. Uh, but not always we can see that uh, things that we expect, wish, uh, coming true, right? So, people can get uh, upset about it. So that's also a dukkha. The last, uh, you know, a definition about the first noble truth is sankhite na panchupada na khanda dukkha. Okay, so what is khanda? Khanda means five aggregates. Buddha says we all have five aggregates. Rupa khanda, the aggregate on aggregate called rupa. We have a rupa, a physical form. And vedana, uh, we have an aggregate uh, we have an aggregate inside of us called feeling. So we, we, we can feel uh, painful, uh, pleasant, or a mixture of those two kind of feelings. And sanya, the aggregate called perceptions. So when we uh, identify, recognize things, we all have uh, perceptions before we uh, uh, you know process those external objects. Uh, let's say I'm talking to you uh, uh, now on StreamYard, and StreamYard is pretty new for me, and I have perceptions about StreamYard, so, right? So perceptions, that is called Sanya. And then Sankhara, aggregate called uh, formations. So Sankhara means aggregate called formations. Formations includes all the karmic activities, <clears throat> because all the intentional uh, activities of your mind, they include uh, in the uh, Sankhara Kant. And the last one is Vijnana Kant, that means uh, the aggregate called consciousness, so all the mind activities. Now, basically, uh, you know, the location part of the mind uh, and, and uh, you know, innate activities of the mind, because the Kamma has been separate from uh, uh, Vijnana Kant. Now, what what Buddha meant by Sankhite in a Panchupada Anakanda is the, uh, the five aggregates subject to grasping are suffering. Now, five aggregate is not suffering, but when you, when you, uh, when you, when you put your aggregates, uh, you know, with, when you use your aggregates with grasping, upadana, you take it so, uh, you know, tight. Uh, when you uh, develop your aggregates into a very, uh, tight, very, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of, you know, into a level that you can see there's craving and that creates Dukkha. So in short, uh, we know the first noble truth includes uh, birth is a Dukkha, 
I mean, uh, you should not take it, uh, uh, you know, in a very negative way because Buddha has two truths in all the uh, Four Noble Truths. Uh, he talks about Samudhi Satcha and Paramatta Satcha. You were born, uh, so it's a Dukkha, but uh, you have, because you have been able to be uh, born, uh, use your uh, life, uh, your human life, uh, to do a lot of good karmas and especially, especially the Kusala karmas and then attain uh, at least Sotapanna stage. One day you can attain Nibbana. Uh, but still the birth is Dukkha, right? Because you you feel you get sick, um, you feel a pain. Uh, so it's kind of like that, right? And decay, right? We know that uh, we are getting uh, you know, uh, all time to time, uh, at some point it's good. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you might not feel comfortable with your aging because when you, uh, the, 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 the first day that you uh, get to see your ripened hair, uh, your wrinkles, uh, and all that stuff, you are not, you are not happy. That's why, uh, you know, this aging process is good to a certain extent, but from uh, some point onwards, it could be not a pleasing thing. So it could be a dukkha. Marana death is always, uh, you know, uh, a dukkha. And grief, uh, lamentations, physical pain, mental pain, and despair, which you call complete loss of hope, uh, not getting what, what one decides. They all are dukkhas. Right? I don't want to go to, uh, you know, uh, uh, each one because you understand by English names. Okay, so that's the first noble truth. The second noble truth called Dukkha Samudaya Arya Satcha. That means uh, the cause of, uh, the noble truth called the cause of Dukkha. The cause of truth has been given as Tanha, craving. Now, uh, what uh, one can develop uh, with the Dukkha in the previous truth is craving. So one because one is attaching too much, one is grasping uh, towards uh, five aggregates, uh, one is not finding a way out from the birth, decay and death, sickness, then what happens? One <clears throat> uh, develops craving. So the craving is the cause of uh, Dukkha. So the craving has been defined, has been explained in three ways. Craving has three uh, parts. Kama Tanha, craving for sensual things, I would say sensual world. Bhava Tanha, craving for becoming. There are people who might say, you know what, this life I'm not happy, so I want to be uh, reborn again. Because the problem is when you die, you never know uh, which birth you will be uh, reborn after that. That's why Buddha says, please try to attain Sotapanna, at least Sotapanna. Because if you attain Sotapanna, it's guaranteed you will not go to four hells, right? There are four hells, four woeful, painful states. But if you have, if you will not be able to attain sotapanna, that means uh, you are not guaranteed to be reborn in a good place. Even though you might think that you want to be reborn in a good place. That's why Buddha says becoming is a craving. Now, there are people who might say, do good karma and you can be reborn in a heaven, deva place. Who, who knows? All depends on the, uh, uh, you know, the last moment, right? Uh, that doesn't mean that whatever you've been doing uh, this life uh, won't count. They count. But the immediate birth uh, will be decided upon the last thought that you may have. So that's why I'm saying, uh, while you're doing good karma, kusala and punya, try to... Uh, Try to try to do more into kusala and and um, attain sotapanna at a certain at a certain point. So you are guaranteed you are not becoming. So, but there are people who want to be who 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 want to be uh, into into next births who really want to be. So they have a craving. We call it bhava tanha, the second uh, part of tanha. The third part of tanha is. Vibhavatana. There are people in this world who don't want to be reborn, but they have a different uh, distorted perception. That means there is no next life. Let's enjoy, eat, do whatever we want. There are no uh, future lives so that uh, don't worry about it. That could be a problem because that takes you to uh, an amoralistic uh, view, right? 
because when you are uh, you know uh, you know uh, amoral then what could happen to you is that you don't believe in uh, virtues you don't believe in karma so you do whatever you want so that's why buddha says we have to cut down on uh, three uh, parts of tanha craving karma tanha craving for the sensual things uh, and uh, bhava tanha craving for the uh, future lives becoming and vibhava tanha craving for uh, craving for uh, not becoming but in the in the in the context of uh, doing whatever one wants like bad stuff so the the these three parts of tanha uh, need to be uprooted okay that's the second noble truth the noble truth uh, called uh, the cause of uh, uh, the the third noble truth is the the noble truth on the cessation of the dukkha. Is there a way to uh, cease? Yes, that way comes in the fourth noble truth. In the third noble truth, it says uh, there is a way. That is nibbana. Let's uh, get into uh, Pali words how it is described. Asesa viraga nirodo chago patini sangu mutti anale. So by using the eightfold uh, noble eightfold path, you are com you are ceasing completely. You are ceasing completely. You won't uh, start to become. Chago, you have to give it up. You know that's really interesting. Not 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 many people think, at least in their normal life, to give it up, give give up some things. They really want to bind to those things, bind to the life, bind to different people, attach too much, right? And patini sango, we need to relinquish. Mutti, liberation, that's what we say, transforming dukkha, pain into liberation. Thereby you, uh, you uh, come into a point where you see joy and peace. Analyu, detaching oneself from dukkha. We need to detach from oneself. So that's called uh, the third noble truth. So the third noble truth is Nibbana. Basically, it's Nibbana. So the solution uh, is Nibbana, attaining Nibbana. So in Nibbana, there is no uh, continuation of Tanha. There is no uh, holding, the grasping. There is no um, non-liberating non things. There is no uh, attaching too much. It has the opposite of all this. And then let's go on to the, the last four noble, last noble truth. It's called Dukkha Nirodha Gamini Patipadari Satcha. Whereby we understand the path that helps us to attain Nibbana. Nibbana is the solution, treatment. Uh, and there should be a way that we can attain Nibbana. That is by on only by following the noble eightfold path. Buddha says it's not just a path, it's a noble path. It's a it's a Arya mug. Okay, so now I wanted to share with you the four noble truths uh, in a little, little bit of details, uh, and that's why I had to I wanted to talk to you about them first. Now let's go on to the path, which is the most uh, interesting, important part of our conversation. Because although you know there is Dukkha, although you know there is the cause, although you know there is the, the solution, but if you don't, you know, take you to uh, the solu uh, to the path, you won't uh, uh, solve the problem. That's why the fourth noble truth is very important, very uh, significant, and we should, we must focus on that a little bit more. Okay, now before I talk about the uh, Noble Eightfold Pan, uh, anyone remembers that the gradual discipline in the Buddhist teachings? There's a gradual discipline that Buddha asks us to uh, follow. That is called Sila Samadhi Panya. I think a lot of, uh, a lot of you uh, may have observed precepts at home because you can go out right so taking precept eight precepts uh, uh is a customary thing uh, on a poetry on a on a full moon day 
uh, especially on the Visak Pulmun poetry. So Buddha says, in order to follow uh, this path, eight, noble eightfold path, one has to go on a gradual uh, disciplinary route. The first part of that route, disciplinary route, is sila. That means virtue. Pre someone can translate precept, but I would say not just the precept. It is your virtue because uh, I know you all observe uh, five precepts. You all take eight precepts. Uh, they are good, but at the same time, you should have uh, a good standard, good standard of your virtues, right? Virtues. What are the virtues? We'll, we'll talk about them. The second gradual disciplinary thing is samadhi. Samadhi is concentration. Okay. The third one is panya. Panya means wisdom. So one has to fulfill this tree in order for one to, one to attain nibbana. So by only practicing sila, you won't go anywhere. You have to take it to the second level. That is samadhi. Uh, by only practicing uh, Sila Samadhi, you won't go anywhere unless you try to go on to the next one. But someone may think, okay, this might be your autopilot. When I'm in Sila, I will go to Samadhi. When I'm in Samadhi, I will go to Panya. No, you have to put effort, right? Sila Samadhi Panya. The reason. Is that. The Eightfold Noble Path is, uh, uh, is an embodiment, is an inclusion of this tree. That's why I wanted to share with you this tree first. Now, Buddha says in the, in the uh, Mahachattari Saka Sutta, the Sutta that I uh, made as a topic today, that three components of the Eightfold Noble Path include in the sila part, the sila disciplinary part. And three components of uh, the Noble Eightfold Pan include in the samadhi. Uh, and two components of uh, Noble Eightfold Pan uh, include in the panya. That means when you practice sila, samadhi, prajna, that means you are practicing the Eightfold Noble Pan. But who knows what components they have to uh, exactly practice. That's why we need to understand the eight, Noble Eightfold Path in a little bit of detail. So you won't uh, make any mistakes. You won't feel frustrated uh, by thinking that you haven't done enough for each uh, you know, disciplinary uh, you know, uh, parts of this uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, discipline. So uh, sila includes three components from the eight, a noble eightfold path. What are they? Samma vacha, samma kamanta, samma ajiva. Okay. Samma vacha means, so what is samma? Some people translate uh, samma to be right. And micha, the opposite is, uh, what do you call? Wrong. But I think uh, samma could be not right uh, in the literal sense. I, I think it could be wholesome. It's wholesome, wholesome uh, speech. And Samma Kamant is the second component under Sila. Wholesome, uh, wholesome, uh, you know, action. Samma Ajiva is wholesome uh, living, uh, the nature of living. So let's, let's take a look at of what is Samma Vacha, Samma Kamanta, Samma Ajiva. And before all that, I want to tell you, someone may think that one has to practice these eight one by one. No. These are individual factors, components. So you have to practice simultaneously. Okay? Because, uh, but you know, the first thing that we know in the Eightfold Noble, Noble Eightfold Path is Samma Ditti. We, know, we need Samma Ditti. Uh, let's talk about that first. Samaditi is wholesome, um, wholesome view. So uh, that makes a big deal in the path uh, into other seven. Samaditi basically means, you know, you whether you understand the path or not, right? So that's uh, really uh, an inevitable part, right? 
because if you don't understand the path, you can practice the others. But other than Samaditi, the rest of the seven, you can practice simultaneously whenever you can. Okay? Samaditi has two parts. That means holes and view. The first part being uh, the mundane part. The second part being the uh, transcendental or extra mundane path. So what is the mundane uh, holes and view? The mundane holes and view is fourfold. Any knowledge of what is karmically whole, unwholesome, any knowledge of what is, uh, uh, you know, karmically uh, uh, the root of unwholesome karma, any knowledge of what is karmically wholesome, and any knowledge of the root of the uh, karmically unwholesome, unwholesome uh, you know, wholesome uh, activity. Now, for example, I would say the first part of the mundane uh, wholesome view is that you need to understand, let's say, uh, let's say lying to someone, you understand this is unwholesome, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is you need to understand the root of uh, unwholesome, uh, you know, uh, nature of that particular lying, that is uh, uh, to ch cheat someone, right? So that means you are trying to uh, understand the root. What are the roots? Loba, dosa, moha, greed, hatred, and delusion. So you may have all those three when you are doing when you are doing uh, that lying thing, right? So whenever uh, you need to understand the mundane uh, samaditi or uh, wholesome view, you need to understand uh, whether this is an unwholesome activity and the root of that unwholesome activity. So there are two. And the other two uh, relate to the positive side, good side, wholesome side. When you are not lying to someone, when you are uh, speaking the truth, then you know it's a wholesome uh, activity. So you have to understand that. Uh, and also you need to find out the root, the, uh, the wholesome root of that uh, truth. That means you are not into loba, you are not into dosa, you are not into moha, you are not into greed, you are not into uh, hatred, you are not into ignorance. It's, 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 it's pretty simple. So mundane samaditi uh, means having a knowledge of these four. That means un knowing the unwholesome activity, knowing the root of unwholesome activity, knowing the wholesome activity, knowing the root of wholesome activity. It's pretty simple. What is the unwholesome, sorry, I'm sorry, uh, extra mundane, transcendental uh, samaditi, wholesome view, that is the knowledge of the Four Noble Truths. So that's what we've been talking today. But the ways and uh, means how people understand the Four Noble Truth is different. That's why we understand a certain structure in the uh, first uh, Dhamma talk given by the Buddha uh, to the five ascetics in the Dhamma Chakka Pathana Sutta, which you call Tipari Vatta Dvadasakara. Tipari Vatta. So one has to understand the Tipari Vatta Dvadasakara in understanding the Four Noble Truths. When you look into the Tipari Vatta Dvadasakara, you understand there are, uh, you know, three main parts for each Noble Truth. Satyanyana, Krutanyana, Krutanyana. So Satyanyana means having a literal understanding, like a normal understanding about the truth. Krutanyana is understanding the role of uh, the truth. That means you need to attain. And Krutanyana means uh, uh, looking back. Uh, that is for a, for an uh, Arya Savaka, for an enlightened being, looking back uh, of what that person has done by attaining Nibbana. So these three parts have to be complete. But you might wonder, where are you in these uh, three parts, uh, you know, in each each uh, truth? You might be in the first part. You literally, you normally, generally know the truth, but you haven't done the role. Uh, you, ha you haven't attained the Nibbana, so you can go to the third one. So uh, that's why I uh, want to share with you that uh, mundane uh, uh, wholesome view is that knowing those four, 
uh, wholesome, uh, unwholesome, roots of wholesome, unwholesome. And when it comes to transcendental, oh, uh, you know, uh, extra mundane, uh, wholesome view, uh, that means the knowledge of the Four Noble Truths uh, with Tiparivata uh, Dwada Sankara. Okay. Let's go on to <clears throat> now Sila Samadhi Panya sections of uh, the uh, Noble Eightfold Path. So Sila, we have Samma Vacha, Samma Kamanta, Samma Ajiva. Samma Vacha means wholesome speech. What is wholesome speech? A speech that is not uh, uh, that is not uh, lying. A speech where you see uh, you won't uh, use hurtful words. That, that's called Parusavacha. The previous one called Musavada. A speech where you do not uh, slander, you don't backbite, right? You talk something in the presence of someone, and you uh, you talk behind the back, right? You you, are, you have one word, so you talk very pretty straight. You are not like using two kinds of versions of your speech to someone. So not lying, not uh, using hurtful words, not slandering or backbiting or talking behind the back, and not being an idle chatter or a gossiper. That's called Sampapalapa. Uh, what is an idle chatter? There are people who, who just want to spend time by talking, right? The time is so precious. Don't waste that. You know what? Uh, we have another 20 minutes, so let's talk something, you know. I don't think that's a good uh, thing, unless you are talking wholesome things. Gossiper is, uh, is pretty bad. That's the extended version of an idle chatter. Gossip, you know gonna uh, pass um, rumors and all that it's pretty bad you know so uh, we need to practice a wholesome be wholesome uh, speech which is uh, not lying not uh, using hurtful words not talking behind the back and not being an idle chatter or a gossiper so we are still talking about the some uh, sorry sila section virtue section some uh, is the first one uh, wholesome speech Second one, which comes under Sila, is Samma Kamant. Samma Kamant is wholesome action. So are our actions uh, wholesome? So what is the wholesome action? It is threefold. Not killing, not stealing, not misbehaving. So you have to uh, look back and uh, look into you, within you, seeing whether you are um you know doing executing these bad things right if you are not killing if you are not stealing if you are not misbehaving you are really good you are already in the uh, wholesome action samma kama samma ajiva is the last <clears throat> component of uh, the sila section samma ajiva is wholesome living now buddha clearly mentions what is samma ajiva wholesome living uh, he uses a couple words he uses the words called uh, kuhana, lapana, nemiti kata, nipesi kata, nijigin sanata. So these are Pali words. I will explain to you in English. Kuhana means cheating. When you are making a living, either a trade or a job or your normal life, do not cheat. Cheating is pretty bad. If you are cheating, you are not making sama archi, which is under seal. Lapana is you are uh, you are talking things to mislead people so that people getting misled, right? Uh, I know there are people who do that in public. I don't want to go into that. I'll get into that. But uh, your words have to be truthful. Do not uh, mislead other people, even in your family, in your society, in your job, everywhere. Nemitikata is <clears throat> trying to embarrass someone and to get it. There are people who want to uh, give a lot of troubles to other people and then finally they want to uh, get whatever they want done by those people, which is pretty bad. We shouldn't ever do such kind of things to other people. Nipesi kata is blaming other people and getting things done. There are people who want to blame other people, you know, and then the more they blame, they think that, uh, the more they can get things done uh, by other people. It's pretty bad. We don't want to blame other people. We will see where is the problem and let's uh, fix it, right? 
Nijigin Sanata means you are trying to use whatever you have to gain other things. There are people who want to, uh, you know, uh, give a really big time to other people, uh, especially who, whom, uh, whom uh, uh, you know, uh, he or she was helped uh, in his life. Uh, so going to pester again, uh, keep pestering, going to, um, you know, mistreat uh, with the previous help, support. So Buddha says, do not use any of these in your life for living, either for your normal life or for your trade life, commercial life, or for job. It's pretty bad. It's, it's called, um, uh, not. it's not wholesome living, it's unwholesome living. But the wholesome living is when you don't cheat, when you don't use, uh, when, when you don't get to mislead other people, when you don't uh, use uh, speech to uh, get things done by other people, when you don't blame other people, when you are not, uh, misusing your previous supports you were given by other people. So it, so that if you are into them, you are having Samma Ajiva, uh, wholesome living. That is Sila, Samma Vacha, Samma Kammanta, Samma Ajiva. And we go on to the second one, Samadhi. So it's a gradual process. Samma Vayama, Samma Sati, Samma Samadhi. Samma Vayama means wholesome effort. So wholesome effort is fourfold. What is it? Buddha says, we we need to, you know, reduce the existing unwholesome activities, right? Let's say uh, you we already have some uh, existing, uh, you know, bad activities, unskillful activities. We need to put effort to, uh, you know, uh, remove, uh, overcome those activities. Let's say someone is lying. One knows I'm lying. Uh, one knows I'm doing uh, other bad things uh, that way, for, for example, then one understands I need to put effort to get rid of uh, this existing bad thing. The second uh, wholesome effort is you know that you already don't have ABC or XYC bad things. You are trying to put effort not to get them on you, right? You are not a liar, but why you want to be a liar? You never want to be a liar. So put effort not to become a liar. Okay. The third uh, uh, effort is the good uh, wholesome effort is that you already have good things. Let's say you are very generous. You are not you are not getting angry that fast. You're not angry at all, and you are not jealous. So uh, put effort to develop. Uh, you know, cultivate your existing good skillful activities and the last uh, wholesome effort is uh, you understand when you with other people friends families uh, co-workers uh, people in society oh this person that i know has something skillful which i don't have so why don't i try becoming so let's say uh, i'm not generous that much uh, although i have i have the things i can offer to other people so why i don't Try to become more generous because I need to be affected by those people. Uh, so to put effort to become uh, a better person uh, with the influence of other people. So that's called samma vayam, the first part of samadhi. The second part is samma sati, that means wholesome uh, mindfulness. <clears throat> Some may wonder: Is there a wrong mindful? Is there a sorry unwholesome mindfulness? Yes. Uh, think about those people who are trying to. Uh, <clears throat> uh, trying to practice, uh, you know, unwholesome ways to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, to practice mindfulness, to do bad things, to to, to plan uh, bad things, you know, uh, that's pretty bad. Buddha says always our mindfulness should be based on four things. We call them satipatthanas, establishments of four things, Est uh, establishing mindfulness based on the body, Establishing mindfulness based on the feelings, establishing mindfulness based on thoughts, establishing mindfulness based on mind objects, kind of pasana, vedan pasana, chitan pasana, dhamman pasana. I want to share with you something interesting uh, in the wholesome uh, mindfulness. There are two words, couple words you have to understand. 
kai kaya nu pasi viharati ata api sampajano satima vinaya loke abhijja do manasan so one has to practice this individual satipattanas with being ardent with sampajana full awareness you know bare mindfulness makes nothing you just you just try to be mindful why you want to be mindful that comes with sampajana full awareness or wisdom you need to know why i'm why i want to be mindful for what purpose so uh, bare mindfulness doesn't make any sense which could uh, turn into uh, uh, you know unwholesome mindfulness at some point because you should have a purpose that purpose is to clarify yourself find clarity find peace joy liberation especially from wholesome perspectives and the last uh, uh, definitive part of the uh, mindfulness uh, you know components is vinaya satima vinaya loke abhichadu manasan having overcome covetousness and uh, you know uh, uh, the mental pain of the body so they are the main focus of our uh, all the mindfulness uh, components so we need to uh, always overcome covetousness strong attachment right if you have a strong attachment you will never make that happen so wholesome mindfulness is practicing mindfulness based on the four satipatthanas the last part, the component of samadhi concentration is samma samadhi. Samma samadhi is wholesome concentration. There are people who want to stay focused, who say, I want to uh, do this and that, so I will stay focused. But this is something more than, far beyond than the normal focusing, normal concentration. That's why it's called wholesome concentration. Buddha says how one can uh, be into wholesome concentration is uh, uh, by being aloof, aloof from sense desires and unwholesome thoughts. When can you become aloof from uh, sense desires and unwholesome thoughts? There you will uh, get into this wholesome concentration. Other than that, you will not make that happen. Okay, so that is Samadhi. Third section, sorry, second section of the Eightfold Noble Path. The last section of the eight noble eightfold pan is panya wisdom. So we need this wisdom. That's the focus of our path. It includes two components called samaditi and samasankapa. Samaditi, I, I think I uh, already explained to you what is samaditi. Samaditi has two parts. Uh, basically wholesome view. It one part is mundane, one part is uh, extra mundane, non not mundane. So what is mundane wholesome view is that having a knowledge, having an understanding of wholesome, uh, sorry, unwholesome activities and the root of unwholesome activities, unwholesome, wholesome activity and the root of wholesome activity. So if you know these four all the time when you are doing activities, actions, thoughts and uh, speeches, then you are good. You have the mundane um, wholesome view. and. When it comes to extra mundane, transcendental uh, uh, wholesome view is knowing the four noble truths uh, without uh, residue, without any uh, remainders. So that's pretty interesting. That can happen when you attain Nibbana. Okay, the last one called Samma Sankhapa. Samma Sankhapa is also a part of wisdom. Why? So what is Sankhapa? Wholesome thought. Do we have wholesome thoughts? What are they? Nekkama Sankhapa, Avyapada Sankhapa, Avihinsa Sankhapa. What is Nekkama Sankhapa? Nekkama Sankhapa. What is Nekkama? Now, a lot of people talk about letting go. You know, I have bad memories, my bad pants, you know, uh, fights I had, um, arguments I had with people, right? All those are thoughts that might have lied uh, in deep, in deep uh, down, right? Uh, consciousness or wherever. So we always say that we need to let go of those past memories because that is previous you, because that's not present you. Your present you is a brand new person and you don't need to get bogged down by those previous things. That's why Buddha says the first type of wholesome thoughts is thoughts on renunciation. Renunciation is the extended bigger version of Letting go. Letting go is that you just let it go, right? But 
renounce means you are renouncing from the sensual pleasures you are renouncing your attention your focus is not into uh, sensual pleasures that much you know that you don't you don't get so much attached you don't get so much uh, you know angry towards uh, those pleasures you are uh, equanimous how, how do you call it? you are into upekka you are into equanimity right that's that's the mentality we should have so the first kind of wholesome thought is thoughts on uh renunciation renunciation means uh the bigger version of letting go practice renunciation uh, not just uh by action but also especially from your uh, thoughts first and then in the actions the second type of uh wholesome uh thought is Avyapada Sankappa. Avyapada is, is non uh, killing, non destroying thoughts. Well, think about it. Uh, in today's world, when you turn on uh, Facebook, YouTube, your uh, whatever browsers, what can you see? Now, these days, people, there are people who uh, might in, get interested uh, in looking at how many people die, how many people get sick, you know. Where is your compassion towards them? You are just nailing down how many people die, how many people get sick from the situation. Where is your compassion? Where is your metta? What has happened to them? On this Vesak full moon poetry, at least we should try. I know there are a lot of good people on, uh, on who are watching here. Uh, at the same time, there might be people who get uh, so much uh, stuck with, uh, you know, not managing oneself by looking at what's going on uh, in the world so that's why never ever have thoughts of destroying other people right when you get to that kind of a thought that means you are really not managing yourself right they are bad people we had to you know uh, distance from them if they are in our uh, close relationships we had to be careful rather than do not try to do any of such bad thing especially killing part try to find out better ways positive ways to solve the problem and uh the last uh kind of the wholesome thought is abhinsa abhinsa thought abhinsa i know uh, people in india know mahatma ji mahatma gandhi the, the greatest uh politician and 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 this greatest individual and the Gandhian philosophy always talk about this non-violence. So uh, Abhihinsa means uh, non-violence, thoughts of non-violence. Uh, aren't there people who want to uh, bully other people, who want to criticize other people, who want to blame other people, who want to find fault all the time, who are not looking at the positive side of everything? There are many people. That's why they have to understand our thoughts are not in line with the Buddha's path. The Buddha's path, Buddha says, never ever have thoughts of, you know, uh, especially uh, destroying thoughts and uh, violent thoughts. You need to keep down, you need to get rid of those thoughts. Have the thoughts of renunciation, have the thoughts of uh, protecting other beings, including you, have the thoughts of uh, appreciating other beings, have the thoughts of, uh, you know, uh, maintaining the safety of other people thereby you are practicing uh, you know the wholesome uh, thought okay so that's uh, everything that I want to uh, talk to you uh, with this talk and I want to uh, recap a little bit what I've been talking to you today because I see there are questions uh, that are coming up on the chat screen we can transform our dukkha that is guaranteed only if you follow the path of uh, the eightfold noble path try to really practice not just to literally see that try to practice try to understand these eight parts under sila uh, virtue samadhi concentration panya wisdom really good and then put the exact precise practice into your path so that you're going to transform your all the pains of your body into peace joy and liberation okay so uh let's uh, uh take some questions now 
guide us on samyak sankalpa to be used in day to day life okay yeah that's what i just talked so samyak sankalp a uh, wholesome thought means uh, thoughts of non uh, sorry thoughts of uh, renunciation thoughts of uh, not destroying other people thoughts of not harassing other people being violent okay why don't we try to uh, cut down on our unnecessary desires? That's the first thought, samyak sankalpa, which you call nikkam. You can uh, get rid of everything, but you can minimize your desires. If you eat too much, you can cut down on eating. If you uh, wish too much uh, if uh, to buy things uh, from outside, if you uh, like too much uh, other people, if you um, so much, uh, you know, uh obstructed by other things why don't you cut down on them so that's the first uh, part of samyak sankalpa nikkama sankalpa uh, when you when you go into the second one uh thoughts of um uh, non uh, killing not killing other people i'm not saying just killing it could be destroying there are people who assassinate others characters on internet uh, if you share something falls on internet of other people you are assassinating someone's character there are people who want to, uh, he who who see some uh, post uh, in the wall. They just uh, you know uh, put the hit button. They never know it is true or not. So you are assassinating someone's character, right? So you have to verify are they uh, true or not, right? So so we are part of the Not only means you are not killing, but also you are not killing other people's characters. You are not. You are not uh, giving bad reputation to other people. You are protecting the safety. You are protecting the truth. When you come to the third one, non-harassing thoughts, we know you need to always practice metta and compassion. Thereby, you will never blame other people. You will never criticize other people in your normal life. You will never find fault that much. If there is a problem, you know how to talk positively, how to solve it really positively without making a big deal. I think that. Uh, uh, helps uh, the question. Any more questions? I'm just trying to put a message saying any more questions. And then if there are no questions, we can close. We can wrap this up. OK, let's see what's going to happen. Okay, if there are no more questions, we're going to share all the good karmas with the departed relatives and the deities who protect all of us. May all the good karmas we all have been uh, uh, accumulating from the beginning of this Dhamma talk be shared by all the departed relatives who passed away in the name of all of you far and wide. May they be happy and peaceful. May they attain the supreme uh, Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Idam me nyati nanghutu, sukita huntu nyateu. Idam me nyati nanghutu, sukita huntu nyateu. Idam me nyati nanghutu, sukita huntu nyateu. It's also customary for us to share all the good karmas with the deities. Uh, Nagas who protect all of us. May the deities and Nagas share in all these good karmas. May they protect and bless the whole world. Uh, the whole world is uh, having this uncertainty, uh, you know, all these, uh, you know, difficult situation. May the Devas and Nagas uh, send their blessings to uh, uh, for, for the people 
in the universe uh, to get back to normal. May the devas also uh, be happy and peaceful. May they also attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Ittavata cha ammihi sambatang punya sampadang sabi deva anumodantu sabi bhuta anumodantu sabi satta anumodantu sabi sang patti siddhya aka satta chubumatha deva naga mahintika punyantang anumoditva chirang rakhang tulu kasasanang chirang rakhang tuli sanang chirang rakhang tumang paranti Finally, let's make a great wish on this uh, Vesak Full Moon Poi Day on 2020. May all the good karmas we've been uh, accumulating, collecting so far by all these ways, uh, you know, listening to Dhamma, discussing Dhamma, uh, be helpful for all of us to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I'm going to be blessing with you a uh, couple more stanzas. Abhivadana silis nichang vadha pachayino chattaru dhamma vadhanti ayuvanu sukhang balang ayuraru gesampati sangha sampati mi vache ato nibbana sampati iminati samidjatu sadhu 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 thank you for the organizers and thank you for listening and uh, may you be well and happy stay safe happy vesande happy buddha purnima day too thank you